Thank you for purchasing our standard automatic stop fire unit. What I'm going to show you now is how to mount it. It's very simple actually. You really only have three things to think about. Your bracket, the unit itself, the manual release pull cable. Key with the bracket, you want to pick the right location. So you want to anticipate to the best of your ability, where is the heat going to accumulate the fastest so it's going to get the hottest so that that fusible link is going to melt with the least amount of damage to whatever you're mounting it into, an engine compartment or wherever. So I've chose here, just so that you can see well, for the place to mount the bracket. Putting the unit in place, I'm going to check there, gauge is in the green, everything looks good, all the pieces seem to be in place, safety straps on there. All right, so I'm simply going to put it into the bracket, and since you're typically going to be mounting this unit onto a machine, make sure that you use the Velcro. Now it is key that you mount the unit in an upright position. And see this thing right here in the front? This is what we call the rake. Now this rake can be on the unit or you can take it off the unit by simply re re, um, removing the two screws at the very bottom where I'm pointing under here. The only reason why you would want to remove it is because then you wanted a direct shot out of the actuator right at some part of your engine or wherever it is that you want it sprayed out. The purpose of this rake is to diffuse the spray. You make that choice whether to keep it or take it off. <clears throat> okay, so now that we've got everything in place, the next thing we're going to do is to put the manual release pull cable. What's nice about the stop fire automatic unit is not only will it work when it gets to a certain temperature, but you can manually release it if you notice the fire before it's gotten hot enough for the unit to actually go off. So mounting it is very straightforward. You got the end, the wire portion, and you've got this brass portion here. Make sure that it goes all the way into the manual release pole cable coupling right here. So I'm going to insert it in there. This is pretty easy to do. Make sure it's all the way in. And I'm going to do a very simple mounting for video purpose. The key to show you is we deliberately went with a very high quality pull cable because we know the applications that you're going to be using it in. Sometimes it can even be the matter of life and death. Very few of them have a metal handle attached to this bulkhead fitting. What I would do is you uh, drill your hole, you can unscrew the metal handle, take it off, push that end through your um, firewall or wherever you want it to go through, then you can attach the handle on the other side. The key point with a metal handle is when you grab and pull this, plastic ones, we, they've been known to occasionally separate, can you imagine, the plastic pulls free from the assembly here and it won't activate the extinguisher. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm looking at the, everything looks good. That's all the way in there. Uh, pieces are all, everything looks good here. So I'm going to now take my wire cutters and clip off the yellow zip tie, take off the little piece of paper, and I'm ready to pull out this pin you've got to make sure that you don't forget to pull that pin because if you forget to pull that pin, the extinguisher is not going to work. So once I pull the pin, all of the pressure of the spring inside, all the mechanics are going to be pressing right down on this portion of the unit. So you got to make sure everything's in place, the clip is in place, the fusible link is in place, pull the pin out. So now if I was to pull the end of the manual release here, pull this out, Obviously this cable here is going to go that way and it's going to set the extinguisher off. It's just that simple. Select the right location, mount your bracket, mount the unit, mount the manual release pull cable, make sure everything is good, then clip off the yellow zip tie and if everything still looks good, pull that pin out and now you're ready to go. If you have any questions or any concerns, anything you need at all, don't hesitate to give us a call. And once again, thank you very much for purchasing the standard automatic stop fire unit. All right, so what do we got going on is a standard automatic stop fire. In there, 
confined space, fire, once it gets to the temperature to set it off, extinguisher comes out, hits the rake, and kills the fire. Okay. okay, so what we just did was test the automatic inside the cab of this machine and it got real black real quick inside and uh, once it hit the right temperature then it went off. The key is making sure that you mount it properly and now you got all the smoke coming out of there and you want to let her cool down before you give it fresh oxygen so it doesn't light back up again. And the beauty of it, no mess in here, none whatsoever. There is more damage from the soot from the fire than there is from anything else. Here's a great example of how effective it is. You got a whole puddle of diesel fuel right here, unburned, and obviously it was so hot inside this cab. Look, this all melted away, and you've got a whole cab filled with flammables. And stop fire, put it out, and kept it out. That's again why you wanna let it cool down before you give it fresh oxygen. And here's what the unit looks like, all done. Fusible link broke. Extinguisher went off, simple.